following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers or Rogers TV. Welcome back to Cable 10 Live. I'm Janella Massa. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. I'm joined by Chief Peter Dundas. He's the Chief and Director of Peel Regional Paramedic Services. And I'm also joined by Vince Savoya. He's the founder, founder of the Tema Contour Memorial Trust. I want to thank you both for joining me this evening. Thanks thank for you. Having us. So, Vince, I'm going to start with you. I want you to tell me a little bit about the Tema Contour Memorial Trust, how it got started, and, and what it is. Uh, well, the, the trust is named after a, a young lady by the name of Tema Contra. Um I had the unfortunate opportunity, I guess if you want to call it that, of, of attending her homicide back in uh, January of 1988. Mm -hmm. And as a result of attending to that homicide, I, uh, I struggled with PTSD, which was diagnosed about 12 years after the event. Right. And uh, this is just my way of trying to give back to my colleagues in emergency services and honoring Tema's memory at the same time. Yes, uh, uh, Chief Dundas, I'm going to go to you to speak a little bit about um, some of the challenges that are faced by paramedic workers for those in the emergency services uh, like yourself. Um, what are some of the challenges and, and what are some of the scenarios that they face that may leave them um, needing to get a little bit of help? Well, there's all different types of scenarios and I don't think you could really put your finger on any specific scenario. It could be a very traumatic event. It could be uh, a death in the service of uh, a co-worker. Uh, it could be a, a, a cumulative uh, type of events uh, where a specific event just triggers a reaction to it. So to be able to sp specifically put it down, uh, you can't. But um, there, I think people know what paramedics are exposed to and uh, can just uh, conclude uh, the type of environments that they have to work within. Right. And, and Vince, so for yourself, you know, was it easy for you to identify that you were having a hard time dealing with, you know, the situation that had happened? And how easy or difficult was it for you to identify that and get the help that you needed? Uh, it wasn't easy at all. Mm -hmm. um, no, I, I fell into that trap of, of what I call the John Wayne syndrome and nothing's going to bother me. And uh, it, it, it really affected my home life. And it wasn't until my wife gave me the ultimatum that I get help or I leave, <laughs> that um, I, I finally realized that, that things weren't okay and, and I uh, reached out for help. Vince, do, uh, sorry, uh, Chief Dundas, do you think that that's a big part of um, the issue is the stigma around that and, and the fear around what other colleagues might think that they may be weak or what goes through people's mind maybe uh, when they're struggling to get help? Well, I think the biggest struggle is identifying that you do have an issue. Uh, like Vince alluded to, um, you know, paramedics are looked at having that very tough exterior to deal with any of the events. But deep inside, you may not be uh, coping well. And uh, those coping mechanisms and there's triggers that identify uh, situations over a cumulative amount of time. Vince's case was a, a good 12 years. Some can be in the first six, uh, six or eight months after an event where uh, a lot of uh, signs, symptoms, and issues uh, come forward where they need uh, help. So it's never too late or too early to get help, I guess. Never. And, you know, once you finally did identify that, did you find that there were resources available to you and that you got the help, you were able to, to identify the help that you needed? There's more than enough resources if one's willing to, uh, to look for them. Um, and, and I did get the help that I needed, definitely. So tell me a little bit more about uh, the Memorial Trust and, and the work that it does. Well, as an organization, we're, uh, we're committed to raising the awareness of acute and, and cumulative and post-traumatic stress and how these psychological stressors affect our public safety officers, police, fire, EMS, members of the military, correctional services. So pretty well anybody who's dealing with, with, uh, with public safety. And, and we do that through a, a variety of things. We were heavily engaged in research and training and education. And uh, in a couple of months, May 5th, we start a cross-country PTSD awareness tour. Right, so this so is the Heroes Are Human tour. Heroes Are Human and tour. And tell me a little bit more about that. Well, we're going to visit 48 cities in 78 days. Uh, we're going to start in St. John's, uh, crisscross the country to you know, Vancouver, back to Toronto. Uh, we'll be hitting the Yukon and Northwest Territories. <laughs> wow. So it's, it's a heavy schedule, but uh, what we plan to do in each community is, is host a two-hour community event. 
um, which is open to the public, mm -hmm. um, where we'll talk about the psychological stressors and identify some of the signs and symptoms that people should look for, mm -hmm. but more importantly, highlight the services available within those communities for people who are struggling. Right, and I do want to talk to you uh, about uh, one of your national spokespeople for um, this project, uh, Enrico Colantoni. People mm -hmm. may recognize him from Flashpoint. Um, do you think that there is enough enough talk about um, PTSD in the media or in you know in shows like Flashpoint? They may I deal with issues like this. Do you think that it's coming out now as something that people can talk about a little bit more openly? Well, Flashpoint was almost futuristic. They they really dealt with the subject of PTSD head on, mm. um, especially for the five years they were on TV, um, and and we've noticed that 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 there that, that there is a cultural shift happening. Um, across the country mm -hmm. uh, within emergency services organizations to recognize the psychological stressors. And, and even today, uh, coincidentally, here in Ontario, um, a private member's bill, Bill 67, mm -hmm. passed second reading yes. uh, that would make PTSD a presumptive disability right. for police, fire, and EMS personnel. So, yeah, things are happening. <laughs> so, you, we did mention that there are a number of services available um, for people who need it if they seek it out. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you know, if you have a, a member of your team who has identified that they um, want to get treated or want to get help, what's, what's next steps for them? Well, uh, we initially uh, go and do some peer counseling uh, supports after a, a, an event occurs. We also, uh, from the region, have uh, supports, counseling services available through the EAP programs that are provided. Um, we're also looking at a service where in a cooperation with our, our local union of OPSU to be able to do further education with the paramedics and our frontline operational management staff so that they can become more aware of the signs and symptoms and be able to suggest some tools um, and some direction for individuals who may be suffering from that or be, a, be consulted by family members um, that have concerns and they can uh, set them in the right direction. And speaking about that, you know, you said your wife was one of the big uh, uh, motivators for you to, to mm -hmm. get the help that you needed. Um, how important is that support from family? And if family are, are maybe identifying that there is something that uh, their family member maybe hasn't addressed or hasn't vocalized, um, how important is it for them to, to be a part of that? It's very important. Um, healing uh, really cannot occur in, in, you know, in isolation. Um, usually when uh, a frontline responder is affected by PTSD, the ramifications of that trickle down throughout the family. Um, so you need the spouse involved, the partners involved, you need the children involved. It, it's, it's, it has it's a to be a, community, <laughs> a family community effort and I'm sure that's Definitely. the same in the force as well in, in, uh, in a teamwork, right? Yes. Just speak to me a little bit oh. about that as well. Uh, the, the paramedic community, even the emergency service community, is another family onto its own. So uh, they're very supportive there, but uh, it is very important for family to understand what emergency services workers uh, can be exposed to during their career um, and uh, be able to identify uh, some of the symptoms um, because they are, they are much better suited to identify the issues than the individual themselves, being shut in, isolated, uh, the nightmares, the sudden reflexes, um, uh, and the individuals may not recognize those mm. issues. It's the family that really is important, and they need to understand. Were you surprised when you did finally come forward and speak to it? Um, what were you most surprised? Maybe was there something that you were afraid of, and and you were able to overcome that? Well, you know, interestingly enough, my partner on on the call when I attended the homicide, I, I never spoke to him about my. Mm. My PTSD and, and some you know, 14, 15 years later, we, we finally sat down and, and we kind of had a heart to heart and uh, you know, he even said to me that he, he had struggled with that particular call. So um, you know, it, it's really quite amazing how supportive your peers will, would be if we just gave them the opportunity. Wow. Yeah. And so, you know, we just have a little bit of time left, but if someone's watching right now, if they want to get help, what do you hope uh, they'd be able to take away from this? Well, again, don't be afraid to reach out. You know, um, use the services within your organization. They're, most of them are free of charge. Perfect. Um, okay, well, thank you so much. Okay. I, you know, it's such a big topic, and uh, I want to thank you both for being here with us uh, this evening. And uh, we hope that someone out there is able to get the help that they need. Thanks so much for watching. And join us again here on Table 10 Live.